Liberal, Kansas, March 26th, day one. Calm down, the boy scolded himself. He was practically panting like a dog, loud enough that any of the damned loonies within five blocks would hear him and come running. Mark was trying to get home, but he'd gotten stuck behind the grocery store, hiding from the hundreds of insane, zombie-like people that chased everything they saw. Beside him, Delaney interlocked her fingers with his. He wasn't sure if the move was for her benefit or for his. Either way, never in a million years would he have thought he'd end up holding hands with the senior prom queen. He'd ignored three calls from his mother this morning on his way to school, and another two as he settled into his seat for first period homeroom. Then things got crazy when Emily Garland, no relation to Judy Garland from Wizard of Oz fame, that the town was famous for, went insane. First, she started clawing at her skin, causing some gnarly damage to her flawless complexion, and then she attacked Mark's classmates. He was only two desks away from her and saw her tear a clump of flesh out of Mike Darnold's palm when he threw his hands up to defend himself. The teacher, Mr. Krause, tried to restrain her, but he was bitten as well. He finally got her into a full Nelson and yelled for someone to contact the office. As he held onto her, Emily vomited a nasty dark pink substance onto Josh Turner, who had remained in his seat nearby. It only got weirder after that. Emily wasn't the only student at Liberal High who was acting insane and biting people. Three or four more people in his class alone began acting the same way as the sophomore basketball star had, scratching and tearing at their skin. That was all it took for him to grab his bag and get out of there. As he ran down the hall toward the front door, the screams of other students who'd gone crazy reverberated off the lockers and the high ceilings. He sprinted toward the exit, and the door from the home economics classroom burst open. Mark stopped just in time to avoid being barreled over by a boy he no longer recognized. He remembered thinking that it was odd that his mind chastised him for the sound of his sneakers squealing on the linoleum floor at a time of obvious crisis. But it had been drilled into his brain for more than a decade to keep quiet in the hallway. The boy who charged out of home ec fell to the floor, his body limp after he'd slammed his head into the cinder block wall when he missed the tackle. Mark leapt over the crumpled form and ran for all that he was worth. The rooms flew by as more of the crazies appeared, tearing into his former classmates. He felt a pang of remorse, his conscience urging him to stop, to try to help everyone. But he knew it was hopeless. If he stopped, he would be a victim as well. He hit the horizontal bar that kept the school's double glass doors secure from the unwanted visitors and surged through them into the light. As he emerged into the early spring morning, he realized that the chaos he'd fled inside had descended upon the outside world as well. The scene in the parking lot was pure pandemonium. Parents who were still in the midst of dropping off children fought with attackers, both inside and out of their vehicles. Several of the buses had crashed. The one that caught his eye was high-centered three-quarters of the way up the flagpole, which was bent almost completely horizontal. More crazies charged toward him. It wasn't only the students, but parents and administrators as well. He swerved away from the parking lot and sprinted up the road leading between the high school football field and the middle school field. He knew that he couldn't maintain the pace, so he slowed slightly to avoid completely winding himself and collapsing. A woman screamed at him as he passed her car. She'd run into the metal barriers around one of the light poles in the parking lot. The engine revved with each wave of her flailing arms, and she impotently tried to reach him. The seatbelt restrained her, and she didn't seem to realize that she was trapped. Information that Mark filed away for future use. The car's passenger door was open. He assumed the child being dropped off had fled when the mother started acting crazy. A quick glance behind him showed that a few people, most covered in blood and gore, were chasing after him. They were sprinting all out, going much faster than he was. He increased his pace again, intent on making it off the school grounds and then to his house that was only half a mile away.